Greetings and welcome to another video. This time I want to show those of you that never touched upon this topic how to enhance the visual fidelity of your Dawn Trail experience. And for those that already know about shaders, I want to provide a more detailed rundown of my presets and give some tips how you can easily create your own presets. While these settings apply to reshade as well, I'm personally using G-Shade due to an easier usability and installation process, as well as an easier green screen feature. There had been certain incidents back in 2023 where some users jumped over to Reshade due to trust issues regarding the creator of G-Shade, but without taking a stance in this critical battlefield, just read the article or watch my No G-Shade video found in the description to learn more about that topic. If you choose G-Shade, check out my full guide about it and for Reshade, follow the guide from Dying Legacy, which can also be found in the description. But above that, there's also a third option, which is found within your GPU's drivers, which is called NVIDIA filters or the AMD equivalent. And I got a video about that for you too. All right, so now to my presets, which I have evolved over the years. I will run them down piece by piece and give you more detailed info about these and what you can do to make them work in your favor and for yourself. And therefore I'm trying to do this as fluent as possible without a script. So my apologies in advance for anything that's not as fluent as you're used to from my scripted videos. So for starting up, I have my MSI Afterburner. You can see the performance values here. And right now we're basically just maxing out the graphics card. We could actually go to 144 Hertz on this monitor, but we are not reaching that. But it's fine because we're using G-Shade and it's still kind of smooth and working quite well. All right, so if you never installed anything like G-Shade, Reshade, check out the videos in the description. But so far, I have configured it to work just um, with F1 being my hotkey to open that up. Okay, so starting on the screenshot one, um, in direct contrast to off. So just check out how the character and background will change when I'm just turning my filters off. And that's totally a different game. Yes, of course, we are gaining lots of performance, but this is basically my all-in uh, shader, which I'm using for screenshots for thumbnails and for very heavy background animations or anything like that. So this is basically pumped with all the shaders that I got and I think are kind of reasonable to use. But if you go back to that, you see the game is also very different looking from the background here. That's basically because the ADOF, that's depth of field change. And we also have another setting here inside the G-Post settings, which also affects the background a bit. And if you turn this off, this is basically how the game will look like without any background blurriness. The next one I want to talk about is something that alters the color tones, which is the LUT setting here. There are lots of values that you can change here and I'm not trying to uh, teach you how all of these work. My, my opinion, just go check these out by yourself. Just go for any of these values, go up and down and test what they actually affect or if they have no effect at all. In my opinion, this just alters the game very slightly that it gives a bit more, yeah, colorful tone or something like that. That's also something I do on DPX here, which is basically just giving more contrast, as you can see. Then, of course, the most important thing, which actually doesn't perform or doesn't consume anything in performance or not too much, is adaptive sharpening. If I just turn this down, I feel like the whole image gets way blurrier. I'm not sure if you can see that on YouTube. I'm trying to have a still image here, which YouTube should handle fine. As long as I'm not turning the camera, the bitrate should actually be uh, sufficient enough. But this is one of the settings that actually improves the overall impression a lot, and especially on sharpness and details here. So yeah, if that is something you're going to go for, I highly recommend these two at least um, in the way that I'm using them. And I can show you that with my gameplay setting, which is basically just these two and Clarity 2. So this is my gameplay setting. And as you can see on my performance overlay here, we're not hitting or not sacrificing too much performance at all. But I think the overall impression and image is way enhanced. And that's definitely something if you're using your UI as well. You can change on NVIDIA filters that the UI is not affected, even though I'm using the DPX and fast sharpen on the UI as well. As you can see, the UI is getting a bit sharper here and also a bit brightened. So that's definitely something I want, but I'm not wanting the clarity on top because that, as you can see, maybe that clips the contrast a bit. 
that's too much in my opinion. And that's something I want to keep on the image, but not on the UI here. So that's this is my gameplay preset. And that's basically the, the values I would recommend using when your focus is to still have a good gaming quality and performance. But also, yeah, the look of a filtered and, and shaded game uh, instead of the normal one that's sometimes a bit flat in my opinion. Okay, so back to screenshots where I want to talk about some very little things again. Gaussian is something that actually makes your image a bit blurrier and I have reduced the bloom and gauss effect a bit here. You can actually go way higher here. This gives this whole image the, the dream sequence effect which um, sometimes really works well in cutscenes. The side effect is that everything goes darker a bit, so you have to kind of compensate with that with a more brightness setting, which you can do on levels, for example. Levels is something where you can adjust the white point or black point to yeah, be more brightened or be darker in, in certain scenarios. And yeah, I basically just use that to make contrast work a bit better, but you could just let it down as well. Big settings here, in my opinion, the MXAO, which kinda are not so prevalent anymore that they had been before, but also they consume lots of performance. As you can see that this just basically, if you're talking about using that for gameplay as well, always uncheck that box because you're not seeing the character in that close position. You're more like on this frame here and you don't see much of a difference, right? Okay, we can see that on grass here. But if you're doing bosses or anything like that, just don't use that setting at, at, at any point here. And yeah, we have clarity one and two, in my opinion, uh, something that's personal preference. I like that the character is a bit brightened, as, as you can see here, as well as white elements or brighter elements are getting amplified a bit. And on clarity one, this is kind of the same effect, but a bit softer. But yeah, you can just go use one of these and uh, turn the values up all the way and then have the same performance as if you're not using them. So there's also the option to use a green screen which can help to isolate your character and you can make very nice screenshots or cutouts from your character to surf on certain websites or for personal use of a profile picture. That's actually very handy and especially for being a content creator this is a must have and Basically, the sole reason why I'm using G-Shade over Reshade because this is much more implemented than in Reshade. So far, this is my preset. These are my settings here. If you're confused about how to get here, definitely check out my G-Shade guide or, like I said, the Reshade guide from Dying Legacy in the description. And then you can just adjust these settings, download my presets, put them into any folder inside of your installation path, and then use my presets according to the file direction that you can find here on the setup window. And that's basically everything I wanted to talk about again. Uh, feel free to just send me any feedback or tell me if there's anything I can improve here as well. Like I said, I'm no expert. It's just basically what I have gathered in the time I'm using G-Shade and all these filters. So basically my experience with that tool to enhance the visual quality of my game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps some of you out to configure their G-Shade or my presets and start with those as a foundation and then configure their own uh, to work perfectly with their game. And yeah, of course, let me know if you have any improvements or feedback about this in the comment section. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy and have lots of fun creating your own presets in Final Fantasy XIV. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>